So I'm here to talk about um, quality of service and quality of experience in the context of video performance. There's a lot of phrases that are bandied about, and they're not really the same thing, and it's really important to understand which one's which. Um, a little bit about me first. I'm Justin Sanford. Started out my career working at Microsoft as a program manager in healthcare software. That turned out to be incredibly slow. So I moved over to Brightcove to learn about video, and I haven't really looked back. There I was a solutions architect working with all of our customers to help implement their solutions for video. And then I moved on to Mux, where I met, worked with Matt and everyone else on Mux's team as a director of product from the data side. Again, it's kind of like I've worn a lot of hats back and forth. Uh, pretty cliche for this part of, part of this country. But really what, what drives the, the consistent experience is that I was focused on the customers and their experience, which will come, become important in this conversation here. Uh, so really what we're talking about here is what is video performance and, and what does that mean? Really, also, why should we care? I think you all understand why we should care. People want to watch your videos. People want to keep watching. And oftentimes, a lot of us make money when more people watch more videos. Um, this kind of comes in with two different terms, quality of service versus quality of experience. Quality of service is often things that people understand a little bit more because it's been around for a longer time. Quality of experience is a relatively newer term with a different kind of view on how to look at performance. Uh, we're going to start off with quality of service. I think everyone here probably has heard of this term. It's been around for a long time. Um, we're going to go to the trustable source of Wikipedia to see what it is. Quality of service is the description of measurement of the overall performance of a service. Not really that helpful there. But to quantitatively measure quality of service, several related aspects of the network service are often considered, such as packet loss, bit rate, throughput, etc. If you look at those specific metrics, you'll get the idea that we're now talking about kind of underlying performance aspects of a service. Throughput, transmission, time, latency, things like that. People often sometimes mention and conflate quality service and quality experience, but that kind of is going to be our differentiating factor in there. For a kind of example, let's look at a CDN. John might, might have better words about this than I do, but we're going to go with this just to start. Um, you're going to start looking at these types of things like overall throughput. This is more used for the understanding of how your overall system is working, how many people are watching it all, potentially how much is it going to cost you. Number of bytes you're delivering through your CDN is really kind of an important metric for the, the service that you're being provided by your CDN. Next is latency, kind of similar things of understanding how long it takes for every request to be served. That can portray itself in different ways to different customers and different experiences. It can be hidden by different experiences as well. You can deal with latency by buffering more in video or by handling that in a certain way so that you don't end up showing the customer any rebuffering or playback delays. Error rates are pretty, pretty, pretty often and pretty common. This happens all the time. You strive to get that down to zero. You will never get that down to zero because, as John said, the internet is a scary place. Things do not work like they're supposed to work. But you can strive to deal with those errors. But again, you're looking more for the quality of service side at the overall error rate. So you know what you're dealing with and how you can build on top of that service that you expect. Lastly, kind of the, the canonical one for CDNs that a lot of people talk about is cache hit ratio. That is really time trying to understand how well your CDN is serving your content so that you can block your origin from getting hit too hard, cost too much money, doesn't perform as well as the CDNs do because they have the distributed network of pops that can help deliver everything more performant. All of these are quality of service levels for the service of your CDN. They may or may not impact your viewers. They may or may not impact the people that are actually using this service on the other side. They're kind of behind the scenes of everything going on, which is kind of the key of quality of service. When we go stop talking about video, we move into similar types of things. Player buffer statistics. How quickly does the buffer fill with video frames? How quickly does it drain that, and does it keep up with that? This ties to latency and throughput of the overall network request, but kind of understanding where your player is with regards to being able to decode and encode the frames they need to actually display them. Delivered rendition is another quality of service metric that people look at. They, people often ask us, what is the common rendition that people play back? Are they watching the HD? Are they watching the 1080p? Are they watching the 360p? And how does that differ across regions? Um, this does matter to your viewers. And so it kind of gets a little closer to where we're going to go with the quality of experience approach. But you have to think about this in terms of the, 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 the situation that you're in. If you're watching on your phone, a 540p playback is not, not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. If you're watching at home on a 4K TV, that's terrible. Quality of service is still what you're delivering across everything, but the quality of experience is going to suffer differently on what situation that you're in. Errors come back again, of course, as always. 
errors in playback, which can be fixed by retrying potentially, can be fixed by routing a different way, using a different CDN. You can try to be defensive around these things, but you have to understand what errors are happening. This is not an exhaustive list of the quality of service. I'm not trying to go through everything about video. It's not going to happen in this short talk. Instead, I really want to focus on kind of the, the types of metrics that we're talking about here. So what we've talked about for quality of service is more about the idea of the underlying performance of the components of your service, the network, the player itself, everything that's going on behind the scenes that the viewers don't necessarily need to care about. That leads us towards quality of experience. And kind of if there's one main differentiating factor between quality of service versus quality of experience, the quality of experience is focused on the viewers, what they are experiencing as it's going on, despite what's happening under the scenes, kind of like that duck on the water, if it's paddling frantically, you may not know on top because everything's working very smoothly. So if you look at Wikipedia again, quality of experience is a measure of the delight or annoyance of a customer's experience with the service. And this is the last Wikipedia quote, I promise. Quote, QOE focuses on the entire service experience. It's the holistic concept. That kind of reinforces what I just said. It's more about what you as a viewer are seeing during playback. That's what matters to me when I'm watching. It's kind of nice because I'm technical. I like to dig in and understand why that's happening. But really, I'm going to make a decision to stay with the service or leave based on what happens in my playback experience, not how the player does its things underneath the scenes and hides and recovers. I couldn't really care less. So you can think about this kind of in, in four categories. Um, and we'll go through them one at a time. The first one is playback success, or if you're a pessimist, playback failures. Um, that's the people that want to try to watch and just can't. That's kind of the worst of it all, kind of the table stakes of, of offering a video service. If you can't do this, then you don't have a good experience. The other three kind of go hand in hand together, and they are startup time, how long it takes to actually start watching that content. Rebuffering, you know, you're watching along and it halts in the middle. It's really frustrating. And then the quality itself, which is a little bit more conditional, a little bit not as, not as clear cut as the other two, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But let's, uh, let's imagine that it's Sunday, and we're sitting at home, and we're watching the latest episode of Game of Thrones, and we try to start watching. And we're sitting here waiting. And what happens is we can't watch anything. This is that table stakes. This is the case where you really cannot do anything, and you may retry, but you are the utmost of frustrated with playback. Kind of this is the playback success case. You really kind of have to get over that hurdle first before you can really start optimizing anything else. The next one is we're back at it. We figured out where we're going. We're trying to watch again, where we maybe now watch it on our phone or somewhere else. And we press play and we wait. And if the sound doesn't come on, that's a good thing, hopefully. Right? Kind of frustrating, right? It's playing now. But that took a long time, and I really don't like standing up here with nothing going on. You'd rather watch this. It plays fine. Works well after the fact. Well, kind of plays fine. Um, <laughs> it's not the point of this one. Uh, the, the point is that it takes a little while to start up. And startup time is a, tricky, a, a trickier one. There, there are many layers to startup time. It's not just the player. It also includes the page and the, um, and the actual whole experience as it is. But from the video startup time, also known as time to first frame, this is kind of the one that people always talk about a lot. It is almost a quality of service, but more it's definitely a quality of experience if you define it the right way where I went to watch a video, I pressed play, and it took a certain amount of time to watch it. There have been a lot of studies about how this impacts people abandoning video playback. It goes anywhere as, as far as you, as soon as you get the two seconds delay, people are starting to drop off. At five seconds, a quarter of your viewers are gone. Every second after that, 6% more of your viewers are gone. So by the time you get to eight or 10 seconds, you've lost half of the people that were already going to watch this content to begin with. This does touch on a little bit of a different case where you actually start wondering if it matters per content type, per viewership, because people like Game of Thrones, they're going to watch it regardless of how long it takes to get going. People like Netflix, they're going to spend time waiting for it to start because that's kind of what they've come to expect. If you go watch like a news clip or like a late night clip on Hulu of something, you really want that to start right away because you're just there to consume two minutes, three minutes of content. You're not there to wait 12 seconds, 15 seconds for things to start up. As I mentioned, there are other pieces to the startup time, uh, pair, player and page startup time. So the overall experience of the, of the system, not just the video itself, really does affect viewership. You don't want a sluggish page. You don't want a sluggish player. You want to try to get people to the content as soon as they can. And then the last one is a little bit more different, which is um, kind of how long it takes after you seek to resume playback. 
that can matter. It can make a difference. If you try to seek past the parts that you've already watched, you may give up if it takes 15, 20 seconds. Again, that's dependent on the content type. It's, it's definitely a contextual limit. It's not a always every five seconds you lose this number of viewership, but it's kind of an important thing to keep track of. All right, so we're back. Um, we kind of figured out how to get a better startup time, we think, we hope, so we sit down and we watch it again. Hey, it started right away. It's awesome. Okay, we're playing. It looks pretty good. And then we get to that. <laughs> right? That's even more frustrating to me than a slow startup time. I would rather wait longer and have it play back than this type of thing. This will never recover. But um, It's called rebuffering. Everyone's aware of it. Everyone's seen it. Um, this is tied to a lot of underlying quality of service metrics, so things like throughput and buffer management, buffer fill rates, buffer exhaustion, those types of things really play, it, play a part in the rebuffering aspect. But again, from my point of view, from the viewer's point of view, I don't care what the player is doing. I don't care if it abandons five different network requests if eventually it keeps playing. I care about it continuing to play smoothly through. One more time. I promise this is the last one. Uh, we're almost done with this. Plays. But if you pay attention now and you look at it, this quality is going to be pretty significantly worse than it was before. Um, it's not as good. It's a little bit more choppy. This is kind of the, the, the compromise that was made, is I'm going to be able to watch it all the way through, but it's not going to be the best experience possible. So video quality itself is that trickier one across everything. And it's because it kind of, there's not a simple answer to it. There are three components to it that we really talk about. One of them is encoding quality. This is kind of before you even start delivering anything, you should spend the time to make sure that your renditions that you create are one, the right rendition set for your viewers, and that they are encoded correctly so that you don't have encoding flaws, encoding artifacts in the, in the renditions that are delivered. That way, when you deliver the best one you possibly can to that device, you're getting the best possible video you can. This delivered versus displayed resolution is a little bit more on the... Um, consumption side of things. If you think about when I said 540p on your phone versus 540p on a 4K screen, they're very different experiences. The phone, you'll live with. You're, you're probably watching on maybe Wi-Fi, probably on a cellular network, and you expect it not to be that great. You're okay with that because you're not really having a poor experience, and it's a smaller screen, so you don't really see all the pixelation. 4K screen in your home, you really want it to be a the theater level, theater quality playback. Um, then there's the last one about like kind of, there's, there's a few more onto this, but kind of dropped frames is a really big piece too. If the player cannot keep up with the throughput of the frames, so it can't decode them fast enough and it can't display them fast enough, that can cause some of that choppiness that we saw on the playback there, which is yet another kind of, com it's, a, it's a component of the overall quality of the video that's played back. Um, you kind of need to keep an eye on all of these things. This one tends to be the, the, the last one that people start paying attention to because the other two, startup time and rebuffering, are a little bit more frustrating. You just, if you can't watch it at all, kind of like if you have an error, you can't watch it at all, you're not really worried about what the quality's like. So this one sometimes takes a back seat. And you gotta be careful when you try to up that quality. If you push too high on the rendition, on the resolution, you can then reintroduce rebuffering or reintroduce startup times. So there's this big kind of back and forth that goes on. So what can you do about it? Um, I'm not gonna be able to answer this for everyone. It's, there's not an easy answer but it starts with measuring it. However you decide to measure it, you should understand what are important for your viewers and you should start measuring those metrics. Whether it is startup time because you know that people are leaving because they can't get started fast enough so they abandon and give up and never come back to your service. Whether it's rebuffering because you've pegged startup time perfectly but at the sake of rebuffering, now that's when people start leaving. You should make sure to measure this. There are two approaches to measuring. One of them is a server side approach where you can gather some metrics. These are going to be more of the quality of service metrics, so not directly the viewer experience. Server side, I cannot tell if when I'm watching a video on my phone, if it actually paused or seeked or rebuffered during playback. I just know that it downloaded the segments kind of in line with when it should have. Definitely can't tell if it dropped any frames. That's not gonna be possible. So client side is where you really start getting into the quality of experience side of metrics because you can really understand exactly what the viewers are seeing as they play back. A um, little bit of a side note here, there, are, there is no answer. Um, everyone does things differently. If you look at our product, it's measuring certain metrics that are very similar but slightly different than other the, of other the competitors out there. Um, there are three different groups that in the past four or five years have been working on different standards. The CTA, the SVA, and Dash IF all have different specs and different standards. Things are starting to 
congeal around the CTA a little bit more, but as you know, standards groups are not, um, not fast. So hopefully we'll get there someday. There's a lot of pressure to get there, but it's not gonna be that useful for the immediate future. The second piece is understanding your audience's tolerance. So that is kind of tied to your content type, whether you have long form content or you have short form content, whether it's quick consumption or someone's really dedicating their night to that piece of content, that's gonna depend on what, or that's going to define more of what people care about and why people will actually leave or stick with your service. Um, think back to like those four, those four examples that we had. What was the worst? Was it the errors? I mean, that, that's, that's probably the worst because you don't get anywhere with this. But it's, it's arguable that like this person watched for three and a half seconds after waiting for 12 and a half seconds for it to start. Uh, that, that's, not, that's not good. No, it's not working like you want it to work. Um, the rebuffering, that's also pretty bad. It depends on the type of rebuffering, longer rebuffers, short but many of them, really kind of depends again on the content. You're kind of okay with a two hour movie, rebuffering two or three times throughout the entirety of the movie. Five minute clip, you're really not okay with it rebuffering two times in the first minute. Um, and then this one, I don't know how I made this. I think I told FFmpeg to do something stupid, but you have seen quality like this. People do this to have something display, and I think that's a very bad idea, because even if this displayed, I'm not getting any benefit out of watching this. I don't really care about seeing. I can't even tell if, I can't who, tell who it is, so. Um, you have to be cognizant of these trade-offs. It turns into something like, and I'm sure you've all seen this before, the uh, principle of three constraints, where you have your cost, your time, and your features, and all together, that's how you manage the quality of a project. You can fit anywhere within this triangle, but you cannot optimize all three of them. It is just not possible. You need more time if you need more features. It will cost more if you need more features, things like that. Same thing is true in video. For quality of experience, you have your startup time, you have your rebuffering, and you have your quality. You'll notice that I didn't put playback failures on here because this whole triangle doesn't exist if you can't play back the video at all, but you can think about this in terms of there are choices that you can make to take the quality and raise that bar, but you may be risking, and you should monitor and make sure that you don't introduce this, you may be risking more rebuffering or slower startup times, and vice versa. You can move anywhere around that triangle, really depends on what your viewers want out of the experience. Um, last piece, and the really is the last thing that I can say is like, there is no answer. Um, there's no single answer that will work for everyone in this room. You have, to, you have to go through these steps. You have to understand, one, where you are. You have to understand what your viewers care about and then you have to try things. Go in and change your player. Go in and change your um, autoplay logic or whatever else you want to make a change on. Your, your, your page itself, remove ads if you want to to see if that makes a difference. I, it'll make a difference, I promise. But um, you can do whatever you want to do here to kind of try different cases and different theories that you have to see what is actually going to end up helping you out in the end. The biggest one is the time that they spend with your product. Um, that's, that's the easiest way to tell it. It's, it's whether you are providing enough value with your content to overcome whatever service you're providing. So there's a lot of research that has been done on specifically startup time. That's the biggest one that people focus on, exactly how much that affects overall watch time by any given viewer. And that really um, it, it is, the, is the most important one. There's other, there's other studies out there that typically tie back to watch time and overall kind of return rates but that's the biggest one. It's again gonna depend on, a little bit of it depends on your business model. So depending on whether you're AVOD versus SVOD, those will drive the business side of it a lot. And really that can help guide whether you're focusing on new subscriptions, retention, or new views specifically. And each one of those then drives you in a different way. New subscriptions, new retention, or more retention will drive you more towards the quality and less rebuffering experience than just watching more views, you really want to optimize your startup time, right? And a little bit less on the quality side because you're not as focused on that. Um, there's, not a, there's not a single answer. It really kind of depends on how you focus A versus B for your business case and what you're looking to do. And then target your test to make a hypothesis, test it, use your control group, use your test group, and see if that actually makes the difference that you expect it to make. And keep track of that across whether that makes enough of a difference or if there's side effects that, that negate that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's one 
not easy way, but one thing that we do at Mux, um, we, ad we analyze all the video. Right now we do per video encoding, and we tie that to metrics that we gather from our customers on the devices and the device viewports that people are using so that we can take those two pieces of information together and decide for this piece of content that you now have given to us, we are going to create this specific ladder for this delivery. We, we tie that with just-in-time encoding so we can do that differently across different like regions or different different like metrics that we have there. But yeah, it's very important to, to take it a little bit lower. You can, you can only go so far by optimizing just the, the static Apple ladder. And you need to start looking at you encode soccer games different than you encode text that will be delivered to a 4K screen. Cool.